Humble Mug. In 2023, there were so many great games that came out, and there were moments where it felt like they were all dropping at the same time. Just in this year alone, we had Tears of the Kingdom, RE4 Remake, Street Fighter 6, Baldur's Gate 3, Armored Core 6, Starfield, Sea of Stars, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, the Super Mario RPG Remake, Pikmin 4, and so many more. And nowadays, it seems like every game that comes out promises brand new unique experiences, or an enhanced version of the gameplay we remembered and loved. They always promise hours of content for us to sink our teeth into, and if you get through that, don't worry because new content for said game is on the horizon just ever so conveniently out of reach for right now. For every release that drops, we're given hundreds of incentives to convince us to try to stay in that game's world. And when it comes to some games, you're actively punished for not being an early adopter or for not always playing. We've got double XP weekends, battle passes, limited time character events, hell, some games straight up become unavailable for purchase after a certain amount of time. And even when we talk about games that don't try to pull some slimy scheme on you, such as Baldur's Gate 3 or Elden Ring, you know, the titles seemingly absent of the bank account draining techniques that seem to plague much of AAA game design lately, what about those games that instead just focus on being a good game at launch? They also tend to bolster a legitimately robust amount of content with multi-layered, multi-pathed, and open-ended rich story moments guaranteed to keep you hooked for hours on end. Even the quote-unquote golden children of 2023's best titles of the year, seemingly untouched by greedy executives, will still require a significant time sink from you if you want to truly experience everything that these games have to offer. If you want to truly complete a game, understand its lore, and if you want to be able to argue on internet forums and without a doubt irrefutably claim that you are a true fan of the game because you platinumed it, got the XYZ MacGuffin in your hands and have it upgraded to the maximum, and you beat the post-game boss rush no problem, you're going to need to invest a great deal of the one currency you truly can't get back, and that's time. With a greater means of access to a multitude of games thanks to digital storefronts like Steam or GOG, or similar services offered by the three big consoles like Xbox Game Pass, PlayStation Plus Premium, or Nintendo Switch Online, there are so many more games pushed out in front of the average consumer than there really ever has been before. Even compared to the 90s when video game tribalism kept competition at an all-time high and it seemed like every year had some generation-defining game. And when every person in the world can have a platform now, it's easy to be influenced one way or another to avoid a certain game, only to realize later down the road after stumbling across an impassioned Reddit post or YouTube video that you probably should have played it back then because most likely you would have loved it. And then, all these years later, as you're finally sitting down with this game from a few years ago that you missed out on, a new, shiny, highly anticipated game suddenly drops, and you realize that every hour you spend with this quote-unquote old game you're currently playing is a precious hour that's being taken away from the new game that's currently the main subject of the world's discourse. And all of this is totally ignoring the fact that we also have streaming services, YouTube, TikTok, hobbies or passions, family, real-life distractions and obligations, all of these things are vying and sometimes demanding for our attention on a daily basis. Even if you had a miraculous opportunity to spend like a year or two to yourself totally undisturbed in something like Dragon Ball Z's hyperbolic time chamber or something similar to just play whatever you wanted to play, it's still very likely that you would have a backlog by the time you got out. Once you do finally get the chance to get out of that time chamber and finally get back on the internet, some random YouTuber out there will have you convinced in a matter of seconds that you actually missed out on this hidden gem of a game earlier this year, and they include it in one of those top 10 underappreciated games from insert system here type of videos, and then you go down this crazy rabbit hole and now realize there's actually like six hidden gems that you missed out on this year. The point is, if you really want to experience every video game under the sun that you would most likely enjoy, you'd probably need to live for another lifetime at least. The truth is, most people just don't have the luxury of being able to do whatever they want, whenever they want, at any given point in the day. And even if they did, they're not immune to burnout or release fatigue or just sometimes wanting to do anything else besides video games. With the way that games are coming out right now, and with the amount of content that each of them hold, if your goal was to focus specifically on 2023 or 2024 games for a year straight, there's still something that you're not going to be able to get to during that time frame, and there's probably something that you'll have FOMO over because you weren't there right when it happened. For a lot of people, the best time to experience a game is right when it comes out, because that's when the hype is infectious, there's a lot of discussion going on around the game, and so for some people, when they miss out on that time period, they just skip the game entirely and wait for the next new thing. But nowadays, there are a lot of games coming out, and a lot of them are great games. On top of that, there are tons of great games from the past that you've likely never experienced as well. Even if you ignore anything pre-Nintendo Entertainment System, 
You still have almost 40 years of games to sift through if you're interested in retro video games or video game history. So when Baldur's Gate 3, Armored Core 6, and Starfield are all coming out within weeks of each other, it's understandable to feel behind or even guilty for playing an older game during that time when you've got these new, fresh and exciting ones in the back of your mind. When Tears of the Kingdom was coming out, I was still working through Breath of the Wild. I stopped making progress in that game after beating some of the Divine Beasts because someone convinced me I should try Shinmu, and I ended up playing that game to completion. Then Super Mario Bros. Wonder was announced, so I thought to myself, you know, I never did finish Mario Odyssey, so I went back and completed that one too. So here I was, still without the fabled Master Sword in my hand in Breath of the Wild during the year of our Lord 2023, while Tears of the Kingdom patiently sat on my shelf watching with discontent as I got distracted time and time again. Then Mario Wonder came and I beat that and I still haven't dived into Tears yet. I know I'd likely love Baldur's Gate 3, but I still have Breath of the Wild and by extension Tears of the Kingdom to get through first, so I shouldn't pick that game up yet, right? But I was also about 85% of the way through Skies of Arcadia Legends on the GameCube and I wanted to to get back to that, and Fist of the North Star, Lost Paradise, and the PlayStation 4 is not going to just complete itself. I also randomly saw a screenshot of a cutscene from an obscure NES game called Dino Wars that apparently many people hated even back then when it released, but that screenshot looks so good for an old Nintendo game so I just had to try it and play through it. Upon research I found out that the game was really short so I gave it a go, and so even a game that was given a 5 out of 10 score back in the 80s was my priority at one point. Not to mention that most of these somewhat more modern games that I've been talking about completing were already at least 5 years old by the time I was finally playing through them and working my way through them for the first time. I was behind, and as you may know from my other videos, I've been behind my whole life. It was when I was trying to put my thoughts to paper for my is there a correct way to play video games video that I started thinking about this topic pretty heavily and started to realize that it's pretty much impossible to play through everything you want to play in your lifetime. And though that's kind of a hard pill to swallow, by realizing and accepting this there is also a sort of comfort that develops from having that knowledge. And speaking of my YouTube videos and my channel, it was at some point over 2023 that I decided it was time to realize my dream of starting a YouTube channel and talking about my favorite favorite games and how they've impacted me as a person. But I started to get in my head a little bit thinking about how I should probably be a little bit more qualified before I start making a video game channel, right? I have a lot of what I would consider major gaps in my video game playing history. For example, until recently I've never owned a mainline Final Fantasy game. The only Final Fantasy games that I grew up with were Final Fantasy Adventure on the Game Boy, which isn't even really a Final Fantasy game, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, Crystal Chronicles, and the world of Final Fantasy Maxima. It just never seemed like I was in close proximity to a mainline Final Fantasy game, and a lot of my friends were seemingly just not into that series either, so there just wasn't a big incentive for me to pick it up as a kid. I did have a Super Nintendo growing up that my uncle gave to me, but it did didn't have Link to the Past or Final Fantasy VI. Hell, I missed out on the entire PlayStation 2 era and I'm only just now getting some time in with that period of edgy action and 3D platformers that I was very jealous of others for having when I was a kid. And so I started to question, does my opinion matter at all if I'm not an expert in all of the classics, at least not some of the games that people consider essentials? I started trying to play through all of these games so I could fight back against some made up internal argument with myself on whether my own opinions were valid and worthy enough to start a YouTube channel because I only spent time with some classics throughout the years versus all of them. But every hour I spent roaming the dark castle hallways of Devil May Cry, exploring the grasslands and caves of Link to the Past, sneaking around as Solid Snake, or wielding this big ass sword as attractive spiky haired anime man in Final Fantasy VII, this was an hour that I was not spending in Tears of the Kingdom or Baldur gate as many of my friends were so kind to remind me, and yet another hour I was putting off making this channel. And so it was during these moments that I realized any effort spent trying to be in the know about all of the big games currently out on the market, not just reading about them but knowing the games through experiencing their gameplay, was futile. The math just simply did not add up when I thought about the amount of games that I was interested in, the completion time required for each, and the ever shrinking amount of free time I had in my life to play said games, and again Again, if we take into account all of those prerequisite series I just mentioned as well as the many others I haven't brought up, it's likely I wouldn't have started doing what I'm doing now until 2030. Even if I was being generous to myself by recognizing that I sort of have a tendency to kind of get my fill of a game after about 10 to 25 hours or so and then move on to another
another one, there was just no way I'd be able to tackle all of these games with the depth and attention that I'd like to, and I realized that it would probably be more interesting to just take everyone on this journey of discovery with me rather than trying to pass myself off as some sort of expert anyway. So it may be a fruitless effort to try to play every single game out there that is deemed essential by video game journalists much more seasoned and well spoken than myself, but by choosing to take my own path via my specific selection of games and playing through them to various levels of completion, I feel like I'm crafting my own experience that will inevitably lead me down new adventures I'm bound to enjoy and be caught off guard by in the best of ways. So what did I do with this new philosophy? Well, I was about 75% of the way through Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise at the moment, and I was thinking about all the people telling me I should play and beat Breath of the Wild so that I could join all the cool kids who were soaring the skies in Tears of the Kingdom. I sat there with this thought and then looked a little more inward to just simply ask myself, well, what do you want to do? And oddly enough, though I was much less familiar with the character of Kinshiro than Link, even though I had no nostalgia for the Fist of the North Star series as I had actually never seen the anime or read the manga before, and even though I was much less familiar with the Yakuza style gameplay as compared to the dungeon crawling puzzle platforming adventure that is Zelda, my answer from within was that I wanted to see Kinshiro's story through. I wanted to know what secrets lie in wait in the city of Eden. And this was a somewhat surprising decision to some of my friends, but they respected the decision because it was clearly mine and mine alone. Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise was my first Yakuza style game, and it's also the first Yakuza game I've ever beaten. I plan to one day go to Yakuza 0 or Yakuza Like a Dragon, but I may make a pit stop in the land of Hyrule first. Or maybe I won't. And it was then that the real weight left my shoulders. There's a certain freedom in letting go of a completionist mindset, to let go of the desire to be in the know about the latest and greatest, and to go back to just enjoying games simply because they're fun, intriguing, or engaging. When I was young and received my first game console, an old Super Nintendo given to me by my uncle, complete with about 20 games or so, my uncle didn't tell me, hey, you should play Super Mario World first, or something like, I think you're really going to like that game called Earthbound. No, what happened instead was I looked at all the artwork on each cartridge, and being a Batman fanatic at the time, through dumb little kid logic, I swore that Arrow the Acrobat must be the coolest game ever because bats and Batman is a Batman, right? And Batman's cool. Flawless little kid logic. I know now that in that little collection alone, there were heaps of games better than Arrow the Acrobat. But am I embarrassed to say that for a brief moment in time, I chose Arrow over F Zero, Street Fighter 2, Super Mario RPG, and other classics? Of course not. Because I played them all eventually anyway, and it didn't take too long for me to realize Earthbound was the greatest game ever. Of course I made an ill informed decision. I was a kid, and that was part of the fun of it. Nowadays, as adult gamers though, our decision making process goes far beyond simply the artwork on the box art or the blurb on the store page. We have a wealth of knowledge at our fingertips, we can find a written walkthrough with screenshots or instructional videos on how to pull off a certain combo in a matter of seconds. And so when we have all of this information at our fingertips, the thing that we can become really good at really fast if we're not careful is optimizing things so much that we actually optimize the fun right out of it. And I think chasing the dragon of trying to experience all of the latest and greatest games while simultaneously trying to make up for lost gamer cred that I felt like I didn't have by beating classic retro games really just sapped the fun out of gaming in general for me for a bit there. It was when I took the pressure off myself and just played what I wanted to play where I really felt like the shackles had come off. And it makes sense, right? At any given moment, your wants and desires are different depending on the situation or the point in life that you're in currently. If you go out for a night with the fellas and you've had some beers and the night is winding down, sometimes the best thing you can think of to have in that moment is just this big greasy burger. However, if you're out with your significant other for your inner anniversary, chances are you will want something a little more luxurious. It's the same here. Sometimes I really want to just experience something that I know is a 6 out of 10 game because it's still dumb fun or I might enjoy the characters or the jank, and other times I want to see something that just truly blows me away and inspires me. Ironically, though I realize I don't have enough time for every game that I could possibly ever enjoy, I've learned that I do have the time to play exactly the type of game I want at any given moment within the collection that I do have. And you may have already been thinking about this, but by taking the time to play the games you want to play and by not playing a game as soon as it drops, you set yourself up for a lot of potential benefits. 
By the time you get around to a game you've had on your radar a year or two down the line, chances are that any launch day bugs are fixed, balance patches have been administered, and a lot of the release day kinks in general have been ironed out in some way. If there was DLC release for the game and you wait long enough, there's also a good chance that by the time you're able to actually play it for the first time, a definitive edition pre-compiled with all of the DLC content has already come out. You're likely to get the game at a major discount, and even when it comes to games like first party Nintendo titles that don't typically go down as much in price, there are sites like Deku Deals that will let you know anytime there's a deal going on for the game you want. Outside of the recent Mario titles like Mario RPG and Mario Wonder that I just felt like I had to have, I haven't paid full price for a first party Switch game since Super Smash Bros Ultimate release, and that actually includes titles like Tears of the Kingdom, Metroid Dread, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and so on. You just have to know where to look and you've got to be patient. I do keep a rough list of the games I want to complete, knowing that this list is just a suggestion, it's not a demand. I look at this list of games sort of like how you would look at the main quest in an RPG. When it comes to the other games that pop up and distract me from time to time, which this year were titles like Rygar, The Battle of Argus on the Wii, The Original Fantasy Star, Death Spank, and many others, these are sort of like the side quests that you'll find along your journey. And anyone who has experienced a solid RPG knows that sometimes those side quests are the best part of the whole game. There are a lot of true Truly fantastic games I just dropped one day and haven't come back to for whatever reason but would like to. There are some games that I know are fantastic that I know I'd really enjoy and usually they're somewhat easily accessible but life just gets busy and I haven't gotten around to them yet. There are a lot of games people are surprised I haven't played and there are a lot of games that people are surprised that I'm extremely familiar with. There are plenty of games that I enjoyed way more than I ever thought I would. Games that I'm so glad I stumbled upon. And you know what? I don't think I'd have it any other way. Sure, I might not get to experience every possible game out there, but I can sure as hell try. And most importantly, I can do this at my own pace, because trying to rush through every single game that's out there and trying to take in everything all at once is simply just going to sap the fun out of video games in the first place, which is the reason we play, right? And so, for those curious, this is a timeline of what I would consider the main games that I played over the year of 2023. In the middle, we have the completed timeline, highlighted in green, which these are the games that I set out to complete from the get-go, and I did. As you can see, it was a very Mario-heavy year for me. I got Bowser's Fury for Christmas, and then I wanted to go back and complete Mario Odyssey, and then Super Mario Wonder and Super Mario RPG both dropped, and I just felt like I had to play those. I also got into a lot of Dreamcast titles, and so Shinmue and Skies of Arcadia came in at that point. And then at the top we have side quests, those are highlighted in white, the unexpected completions. These are the games that just kind of snuck up on me. And really quick, just because I know I'll get some questions about this, I do consider A Link to the Past a side quest game for me, not because it's a lesser game than these other titles, but actually just because I wasn't planning on playing this game. I was on a flight, and my PlayStation Vita died, and I happened to have a ROM of Link to the Past on my phone. So since my phone was the only thing I had to entertain myself, I started playing A Link to the Past, and as I'm sure you're aware, it was such a good game that I just kept playing and playing and playing and eventually beat it. So it's not that I consider A Link to the Past lesser than any of these titles, in fact it was one of my favorite experiences of the year, it just wasn't something that I had on the books necessarily. And finally down below, these were some of the games that I did put a substantial amount of time into and I want to go back and finish. The one I'll probably go back to first is Mega Man Legends as I'm almost done with that game. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more insight onto my personal gaming journey this year. As I said earlier, I'm going to take all of this at my own pace, so if I don't beat Elden Ring this year, that's not a big deal, but I know that I will eventually. I wish you the best of luck on your gaming journey, and if you're still here, thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay humble.